Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm here with a, a friend who's been a friend for almost a year now, who I'm excited to introduce you to. Um, but before we dive into that, if you guys enjoy the show and this has been blessing you, please leave us a rating and review. It really helps us reach more people at this politically propitious moment when people are politically and morally pissed off and they're looking for community, they're looking for the right ideas, they're looking how to equip themselves to engage in the marketplace in the public square, which we're going to talk a lot about right now. Um, and to advance their oftentimes deeply religiously held beliefs as woke America and woke pastors are telling them to keep their faith out of politics. We're going to pack all those kind of ideas. That's what we do on the show. If that is helpful for you, please leave us a rating and review. It really helps us reach more people as long as I can fly under the radar and exist on these technocrat platforms. <laughs> My friend today is Michael Seifert. He is the host of the conservative podcast Rethinking Politics and Culture, a podcast I listen to to uh, refine my beliefs and articulation on politics and culture. I encourage you to go subscribe. It's a really great podcast. He does two episodes a week um, and covers pretty much anything where this show is focused on pro-life. Michael dives into it all. He's also the CEO and founder of Public Square, a company that seeks to equip conservative and Christian Americans to participate in the public square by putting their money towards companies and ventures that don't hate them and want to fund the destruction of their children and the posterity of the country. And there's a lot more that they're going to do as well, which I want to unpack with you. But this is important because this is an easy way for you to fight back. Um, as Black Lives Matter has received upwards of $100 million from Woke America in the last year to an organization that hates black babies and wants to sanction their slaughter and launches organizations with Cecile Richards, the former founder of Planned Parenthood. What would happen if pro-life and Christian Americans were as generous with our funds and those in positions of big business to support life. We're going to unpack it all. I think it will really bless you. I think it will fire you up and get you equipped and onto the battlefield in a tangible way for you and your families to fight back against the culture of death. Stay tuned. I'm Seth Gruber and this is Unaborted. <laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. My guest today is Michael Seifert, who I hopefully just introed you to well. Michael, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, my goodness, man. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be here. Yeah, so we um, connected actually first um, because I met your wife at a church I was speaking at in South Orange County, oh, yeah. and she had a table set up for the local pregnancy resource center. Yeah. Um, and she told me, she was like, oh, you'd love my husband. We should get together. We should hang out sometime. We eventually did at an event. Then we grabbed coffee in San Clemente before I moved my family up here to Thousand Oaks. And so we got connected because your family is so passionate about life, which awesome. is all we talk about on the show. Um, but you dive into a lot more, which is so valuable because many pro-life Christians, you know, this is a single issue for them, but they don't know how to articulate it. But they're, I found a lot of my Christian brothers and sisters are pretty ignorant when it comes to other political issues hmm. that are very important to contend with at the same time you contend for life. Yeah. Because as much as, as true as it is to say that we're single issue voters, if that's all we focus on, um, we're actually kind of abandoning other battlefields that you kind of actually have to contend on, not just to save the preborn, right, but also to guarantee your freedom to protect the preborn. You have to fight for the freedom to fight for the unborn. Yeah. And these other political issues matter for those reasons as well. Like Canada, you can't even sidewalk counsel outside yeah. of an abortion yeah. clinic without being arrested. California yesterday, well, from when we're recording this, uh, two bills. Uh, one, banning photography and filming of pro-lifers outside of abortion clinics, and the other to prevent pro-lifers from handing literature on a public sidewalk to women as they walk into an abortion clinic. If you don't fight for the freedom to fight for the unborn, you're screwed as well. So much of what you're doing is you are fighting in those other arenas for life and liberty. But most recently, you've started stepping out and really giving a huge game plan for a way for conservatives and Christians to fight back against the culture of death, against woke America, who hates them in their guts, but is happy to take their money. Why are we funding these people who hate the unborn and of course, hate us? Yeah. So tell us what you're up to and, and tell us about your podcast as well. Yeah, cool, Seth. It's an honor to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. And it's great to engage with your listeners. It's, it's a real privilege. I, I have, I've really enjoyed our relationship growing over the past year. And we, part of the reason that I'm, I'm so passionate about the pro-life movement in the context of the greater political movement even is because um, so many of the root causes for our cultural apathy or complacency related to the, the abortion issue, for fighting for the lives of the unborn, mm. is actually the same root that leads us to be deceived in the immigration arena, leads sure. us to be deceived in tax policy even. And so, for point. example, we've, we've talked a lot about false compassion. And so many of the people that advocate for a pro-choice position are doing so on the altar of a false compassion. The same deal with immigration yeah. debate. 
many of the, the views on immigration policy from sort of the, the progressive secularists in society or even the progressive Christians is rooted in a false compassion that actually ends up harming the immigrant, harming the taxpayer and the entire system more than it helps anything. Great point. And so I'm, I'm really passionate about politics for the same reason that you're passionate about the pro-life issue especially is because there's a deeper root to these things. And so my, yeah. my, my entire... Um, adult, young adult, and then even kind of high school life, I've, I've been really passionate about trying to understand the root causes of issues. Mm. Um, Wonderful. There's always got to be more underneath the surface than, yeah. than just what the pundits are talking about. And I, I really can't understand how to refute an argument on the other side unless I understand what the, the root yeah. is. Yeah. And it's what I love so much about your show, that wow. you talk about the roots. That's a really good point, actually, Michael. It, it, the word is status. It means the heart of the matter. Yeah. Um, what is the root, the heart of the matter? And um, in, in my observation of our political climate and our political discourse in this country, Michael, I have found that political pundits, and well, I call them journalistic prostitutes of the Democratic Party, but anyways, <laughs> you can use whatever term you'd like. Um, I found that actually the, the status and heart of the matter for the issues that they wax and wane on um, is the very issue that they ignore the most. Of course. And this yeah. is... They this, always accuse you of what they're doing themselves. Exactly. Yeah. And this yeah. kind of comes to the conservative consolation, which is that reality always reasserts itself in the end. Yeah. Um, and because reality tends to be, in the language of our founders, self-evident, because reality tends to be self-evident, then that means that the heart of the matter, on many issues, not every issue, but on many issues, is actually also self-evident. Yeah. Those, we call them first principles. Um, well, these uh, journalistic prostitutes of the Democratic Party, CNN, CNBC, ABC, all these ones, uh, Washington Post, New York Times, uh, they have to ignore self-evident truths. This is what I just talked about in a recent episode I aired on Unaborted, um, where um, Joy Behar on The View accidentally admitted that pro-lifers are right. Um, and I, I won't get into why, but she, she kind of slipped and acknowledged a pro-life truth that unborn children are human beings because reality tends to be self-evident. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's our consolation is that we're, we, we know that we're on the side of truth. We're contending for truth. And when you can lift the propaganda veil, uh, the political correctness, um, the Orwellian language of those on the left, then reality is somewhat more visible to the American public. And, and that's why you're refining that reality on, on your podcast. Yeah, I try. It's, it's, uh, I get fired up listening to you because I, you know, I, I, that really is my goal that people would see the truth and that the truth would set them free. And Amen. there's, there's such an attack on, on definitions today because <laughs> right. um, they want to change what, what justice looks like. And by they, I mean sort of manipulative powers that be on um, the sort of progressive secular side. I don't believe most people are nefarious in their intentions. I believe that there are a few manipulative powers that really pull people away from the truth. But they're trying to redefine justice, redefine love, redefine life, redefine because that's the only way they can justify that than the, the right. agenda that they want to promote. Right. Because if you can liberate yourself, even from human nature, yeah. if you can pull that off, yeah. Yeah. then there's no end to your no, political life's on project. Your terms. Yeah, and that's, that's the whole point. It's, yeah. it, they, it's always been to entirely upend society so that the religion of secular progressivism can remake society in their own image. Yeah. So, so much for us being the theocrats, right? Yeah. So yeah. For, for Christians, Michael, and pro-lifers, who they see some of this, big game. They see the status in the heart of the matter. They see through the fake news, which by the way, Joseph Goebbels once actually described uh, when he says, if you tell a lie big enough, you can actually get people to believe it. How? By saying it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And thus he says that the public must be shielded from the political, economic, and social consequences of the lie. Hmm. Well, of course, he was talking about the lie that not all humans are persons, course, that yeah. the Jew is not a person. Yeah. <laughs> and so the German public had to be hidden from the consequences of that lie. Um, and that's what the mainstream media does today, is to hide people from the consequences of the lie, hide the truth, but they know it's a lie and they're promoting it anyways in order to achieve political goals. So for the people who listen to to my show and to your show, and for the people who care about the country, about the life of the unborn, about liberty writ large, the true meaning of liberty, which is the wise restraints that make men free, um, how do they fight back when they don't have their hands on the reins of political power, okay. right? They're not able to just um, initiate systemic change. Um, but, you know, do they just stop shopping at Starbucks because Starbucks funds wokeism? I mean, practically, how do we fight back in these cultural wars when many people are feeling disgruntled even with the political system because they don't think that our president was fairly elected in the first place? Yeah. Do you have any ideas on maybe how American citizens can fight back? Got a few. Yeah. I, you know, I, I get asked this a lot. And, and I also hear other similar speakers get asked this a lot. 
we have a fired up base of people that are virtuous people that believe in the truth, that want like, okay, I get it. I'm in. What is my next step? And so, you know, I'm, I'm sure we can talk about this a little more um, as the show goes on. But I started a company uh, with some of my closest friends this winter, actually, called Public Square. And, mm. and Public Square exists to solve the answer of what do I do now? Um, the heart behind it really is that, that we'd recognize that all politics are local and that if you want to make a change in your community, if you want to feel activated to right. fight for the issues you care about, it all starts in your backyard. It has mm. to. Um, and the left learns this 20 years ago. They, they implemented this. They Longer said, than that. Yeah, why don't we just go after the school boards? Because while, while the country's at writ large is focused on the sensationalism of the presidential race, like what matters a lot more, and we've learned this in COVID, because you could be in one county and have vastly different reopening circumstances than the county next to you. Yes. Like your county board of supervisors matters way more to your daily life than who the president is. Or your governor. Or your governor, exactly. Um, your city council, your health authority, your water district. <laughs> I mean, this, these type of races... Yeah. Um, you know, there's a real arm, uh, an opportunity that people can extend if they're if they're willing to get engaged in the local arena. Um, so I started a company called Public Square that essentially connects conservatives on a local level with the people in their area that see the world the way that they do, and gives them a forum to chat to engage wow. unto something, connection unto something that you wouldn't just be connected for sort of an endless zombified scroll right. of a feed, but you'd be connected to learn what's going on in your area that can help you make a stand for your values. You'd wow. never have an excuse for being inactive. Right, right. Um, we have another component of the app called The Fountain. It's basically a, uh, an encyclopedia of resources, 300 plus resources, uh, about 70 different topics updated twice a month, wow. fact-based, um, research-oriented, related to everything from critical race theory, the pro-life issue, um, tax policy, immigration, Israel-Palestine, our relationship with Canada, our relationship with Mexico, uh, everything under the sun we talk about Wonderful. so that you can be equipped with knowledge so that when you are active, you know what you're doing. Yeah. And then the, the third component is our marketplace. And this is what you just touched on, which is that we actually have a real desire that people would change the way that they spend their money. Hmm. The best way that we can move the market is by moving the market. The right. best way we can move the needle in society at large is by telling these major corporations that have made their political leanings very, very clear yeah. and cater to a minority of the country, by the way, because liberal, self-professing liberals, according to Gallup in 2019, are only 24% of the country. 37% of the United States is conservative, self-identified, and 35% wow. is moderate. So the majority of Americans are tired of woke corporatism, right. and yet they keep going that way because we haven't fought back. We haven't played offense. And so what Public Square will do is right. tell you the 15 coffee shops in your area that support your values, That's right. and then give you discounted incentives to go shop there. Coffee shops, restaurants, um, hotels, golf courses, amusement parks, laundromats. Wow. Yeah, now, say, really say, say that again for our listeners. So they jump on this platform, this app, this website, yep, it's free. And, and they can immediately uh, identify businesses across different markets. Yep that are saying, we don't hate your guts, yep. we don't fund wokeism, yep. we don't fund critical race theory, we don't like abortion. Amen. And that incentivizes the buyer to go there. And, and you know that these people are incentivized enough to change their purchasing habits. How? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've done a lot of research in starting this. The backstory is that I, I, with my podcast, Refining Politics and Culture, I had the real honor um, to grow a nationwide audience and get to hear from people in communities around the country that would reach out and say, I feel alone disconnected from community. I feel like I don't know who my people are. I feel like I'm, I'm misinformed if I watch the news and I'm uninformed if I don't. It's like, what are my options here? And then the third piece is I want to spend money in alignment with my values, but I feel like the marketplace has turned against me. You watch mm. the Super Bowl for three and a half hours and it's a <laughs> bunch of companies basically making fun of conservatism yeah. and traditional values. Yeah. And so you log onto the app. It's all free. We're launching in September in Southern California and then full scale nationwide shortly after. Right. And it's an entirely free experience, no in-app purchases. And you'll actually, with your zip code, be opened up to a world, a marketplace, a public square around you filled with companies solely that support your values. Wonderful. That actually have said, you know what, I'm willing to say no yeah. to sort of woke corporatism. Yeah. I'm willing to say we do love America and we are common sense oriented. That's wonderful. We, we have businesses that are you know, flying the flag out the door, American flag, hoorah, rah, really excited about that. Yeah. We also have businesses that have said, you know what, I'm not even super political, but I'm certainly not donating to Planned Parenthood. Yeah. And That's I right. want your consumers to know that I value them That's and I value right. their business. That's awesome, yeah, come on. We ran a lot of market research that found that, we asked um, back in March, two questions to our, our nationwide survey. The first was, um, how many of you are willing to spend 10% more to shop in alignment with your values? And how many of you are willing to drive 10 minutes farther 
to shop in alignment with your values? And 98% of our respondents said yes. And we were wow. like, there's something here. There's so what if we can yeah. give them discounts to go to those places <laughs> yeah, yeah. and make it easy because it's local. Yeah, and so. you're, you're building a community. You're yeah, connecting like-minded individuals. Yeah. Well, you guys, you just heard that. I hope you're fired up now. We'll put a link to all this in the show so you can get this app and the platform and subscribe yeah, of course. Um, as soon as it drops, which is September. You got it. Yep. Grand opening. Yep. So in Southern California, absolutely beautiful. I know for myself and my wife, Michael, we have changed a lot of places that we shop in the last season because of this wokeism, yep. um, which is far more viral and infectious than COVID-19 will ever be. Of course. Uh, and we, we stopped shopping in places that even required masks. Yeah. Um, and then you're not alone. And then especially ones that are that are really funding the destruction of the country and who are targeting the posterity of the country through critical race theory and comprehensive sexuality education, which is written in large part by Planned Parenthood and the founders of Planned Parenthood and the founders of the Sexuality Information Education Council of the United States, which always goes right back to Alfred Kinsey, the rapist degenerate who raped children in the 1940s to prove that children were sexual from birth. All of this sex ed and critical race theory and all this stuff that's going on in the schools right now, it's driving out these parents who are pissed off about it. We're seeing this nationwide movement of parents blasting their school boards. Um, and these are going viral. It's happening all around the country. Why? Because people have reached a breaking point. Amen. Yeah, they, they finally have. reached that line. For you and me, not to toot our own horn, but like, you know, we're in this space together. Our line was way back there. We passed that line a long time ago and yeah. we got woken up and engaged. Not to denigrate those the listeners of the shows, of course, of course not. Yeah. But to just say like, the more informed you get, the more aware you get of where your line is. And we want people's line to be established now because this has to stop now. Um, but you're right, the left has been doing this for a long time and they have been contending in the public square, right? The, the question becomes, why won't we do for good what the other side will so eagerly do for evil? And you see this with people like AOC, right? Who did this huge Instagram live and in her massive platform, and I feel so bad for her followers who are impacted by her demonic liturgy. But she was trying to boycott the uh, Goya oh, yeah. beans, yeah. right? Yeah. And we all, we all remember that. Well, Goya had their best successful year that year because conservatives were like, frick you, AOC. Frick this, this critical race theory and wokeism. I'm going to go buy from them. And many people didn't even aware of Goya, but they're like, I'm going to so, go support Amen. them because they don't hate my guts and they love America. And, and so the moment is now, the time is now. It's the time for choosing, to quote Ronald Reagan. And if we don't choose now to change our, our well, obviously our voting, but, uh, but also our, our, our purchasing habits, we may not have the freedom to fight for our liberties and the life of the unborn moving forward. Um, but for the listeners, for you guys who are listening to the show, I want you to sort of just understand the importance of this. You might be thinking, okay, Seth, I thought I was tuning into your pro-life podcast. Why are you talking about politics? Why are you talking about political movements? Because politics has consequences and elections have consequences and money has consequences. Mm -hmm. and, and that became very clear during the the 1619 riots, which the, the writer of the 69 Project in New York Times said she was proud to have the BLM burning and pillaging called the 1619 riots that burned down half the country in, of course, primarily Democrat-run cities. And yet woke America, corporate America, has given Black Lives Matter Incorporated upwards of $100 million in the last 15 months. I mean, that is that is wild, $100 million. And for you guys who listen to my show, you'll know that Black Lives Matter co-founder Alicia Garza in 2019 teamed up with the former president of Planned Parenthood, Cecile Richards, uh, probably the, most, uh, the biggest white racist in the country because she oversaw the biggest slaughter of black lives in American history. Planned Parenthood kills more black lives in two weeks oh. than the KKK lynched in a century. So you got the co-founder of an organization called Black Lives Matter teaming up with the biggest murderer of black lives to launch a political action training organization called Supermajority, whose goal was to train and raise up two million young women to be political abortion activists leading up to the 2020 election to get Orange Man bad yeah. out of the White House. So, so just so you guys get this, this organization who hates preborn babies, who teams up with Planned Parenthood, is attached at the hip, who doesn't think black fathers matter, who has no problem with black on black violence and is against school choice, teams up with the biggest murderer of the unborn in America. 
and they were given $100 million by woke America. What would happen if conservatives and pro-lifers and Christians were empowered, were given courage, were given the ability and a mindless way to engage in the culture and political wars against that, Amen. to defund these organizations, to put pressure on them to not fund these organizations? We could fundamentally alter society uh, in the image of our founding fathers and in the image of our founding principles, the natural right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So I wanted to take that aside just to explain to my listeners awesome. why what you're doing is so important. Love it. How can people get involved and what else do you want to, um, what other good news um, or things on the horizon do you want to share with us that, yeah. that our listeners should be aware of how we can contend for life and liberty? I love it. Yeah. Um, with the podcast, the, the best way to uh, engage with the show is head to the podcast provider of your choice, Refining Politics and Culture. You can subscribe there. Um, I've really, really enjoyed that opportunity. I, I do. I talk a lot about sort of the holistic world of politics and culture um, in its entirety. I get a lot into foreign policy. That's a, a lot of my background. Um, so if you want sort of a holistic view of what's going on in the United States and then also what's going on geopolitically around the world and how it's all connected, that's a great place to start. And then with our, with our app experience and web experience, Public Square, again, is what it's called. PublicSQ.com is where you can join our waiting list, learn more about the app as we head into September and into the rest of the uh, fall and then heading into the new year. And we're excited. We, we really feel purposeful in this um, because the story you just brought up is a great example. You know, if you have a, a mega corporation that feels the freedom right now because they're on the side of pop culture, at least the loudest ones, to give money out the wazoo to murderous organizations, the only way you stop that is to by actually hitting them where it hurts. And yeah. you've got to move money away from those marketplaces. I've said from the beginning, you know, my goal is not to burn down Starbucks. My goal is that 5 million public square users would rise up and say, I found a better option that's higher quality, aligns Amen. with my values, doesn't hate me, and I have discount incentives to go there. Amen. Guess what happens? Guess who pays attention if 5 million public square users stop going to Starbucks? Yeah. Starbucks pays attention. Yeah, that's right. And you know, I, I think that that's the best way that you move the needle in these things is just playing offense. And so I'm hopeful because one thing I'll say that I've noticed is um, COVID has awakened a lot in people. I think right. COVID was revealing. It's In fact, if anything, the silver lining in the past year, I think, is like you kind of saw where people stood. That's right. I mean, you learned very quickly, okay, when we actually get down to brass tacks, like what do you believe about the world around you? Yeah. And we've learned in the past year where businesses stand, where political leaders stand. We've learned where major corporations stand. We've yeah. learned where churches and pastors stand. And I think for me, my sort of philosophy around this is like far be it from me to not take the learning experiences of the past year and do something with it. Yeah. And so, yeah, we want to be an answer for people when they hear people speak and they ask, what next? You know, we, we want people to feel like, you know what, I don't even need to ask that question. Yeah. When I dream of Chris the Scott. world in 10 years, the United States in 10 years, let's say Public Square is successful. We did it. Like, amazing. The conservative movement's connected wow. in the United States standing for truth. The incredible. goal is that we're not even needed because guess what? I don't feel alone anymore. Yeah. I don't feel uninformed about the issues that That's I care right. about. And my <clears throat> finances that I've worked hard to attain are actually used in a way that honors what I stand for. Like in my mind, that's how you change a country. That's right. You know, it's got to start there. That's right. So, you know, uh, we were talking before the show, Michael, about how uh, culture is to us what water is to a fish. It's what we swim in and it's all we know. And so the culture has functioned more liturgically for Christians than a Christian worldview or the Bible has been. Yeah. Well, the reason I say that is because this is one way to build culture. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Is, it is to build the public square yeah. where conversations happen, where ideas are shared. And, and as, as people have become increasingly isolated and lonely, not just during COVID, but in a digitally connected universe that sort of separates the individual from real individuals. Uh, people have begun to crave real human interactions. And COVID was a sort of light speed at this. It really sped it up. People were craving for any church that was open. That's why my church, Godspeed Calvary Chapel, and Jack Hibbs at Calvary Chapel Chino Hills have seen triple, quadruple growth, triple, quadruple giving because people found a place where they could be known, they could be hugged, they could enjoy one another's company. They could see you smile. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. But when we yeah. connect together and when we connect with like-minded individuals, really cool things happen. And this is why people love to put on conferences. It's just sort of just a basic societal like um, illustration. Like 
really cool things happen from conferences, not just because of the ideas shared from the, the keynote speakers or the breakout sessions, but because of the relationships that are made. I mean, marriages have happened from these. Companies have gotten launched. Organizations have gotten launched. Organizational partnerships have happened. Um, why? Because people connected, like-minded individuals connected. Um, and so much of what you're doing is going to connect like-minded individuals so that you know when you walk in wearing a um, black pre-born Lives Matter shirt or unborn Lives Come Matter on. shirt, the barista is not going to go get the hell out of my nope. shop. Right? Or you're not going to get nasty sneers. Yeah. People gonna are going to say, I love your shirt. Yeah. You end up having coffee together. That person ends up becoming the godfather of your kid. And then they, they, you know, he marries your daughter, and then you guys launch a business together. I mean, all these kind of things happen when, when people connect together, and you're contending in that public square. Ding, ding. Okay. And you know, we, we love what you're doing. But it's not just Planned Parenthood. It's not just pro-abortion organizations. I mean, Woke America is giving to an, a whole range yeah, of, of organizations and companies that hate our guts, um, hate our foundational premises. I mean, they lit New York Times literally launched a project called the 1619 Project, whose primary contention was that the Revolutionary War was fought to maintain slavery. Yeah. And you had liberal leftist historians emailing the New York Times saying that's total bunk. It's revisionist That's garbage, total bunk. Yeah. And, yeah, and so they're trying to remake society in their own image because they've been the primary ones in the public square for so long. And, and so you're giving people a voice and a mindless way to engage there. But I mean, these people give to ACLU. They gave to Human Rights Watch, which is yeah. euphemistically named because they're pro-abortion. All of these groups that, that kind of are part of the bigger behemoth of the culture of death. All these people are pro-abortion. They work together. They take up each other's lawsuits when, you know, Tennessee tries to pass a pro-life law. So guys, if you're listening to this, this is a phenomenal, incredible, really cool way to fight for the unborn, to fight for liberty, to fight for your freedom to engage in the public square while our politicians and political be betters um, label us, uh, you know, virulent, virulent racists and um, uh, s supporters of white supremacy because we voted for Trump. This is a way for you to engage in your local communities, to not fund wokeness, to build community, and to put financial pressure on these organizations to change. Yep. And we're yep. seeing that happen with semi-conservatives who fold like a cheap suit. Why? Because they got leftist pressure to change. Yep. Well, when, when will we learn from the left to use their strategies against them to promote life and liberty? Amen. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Public Seth, Square, you guys, refining politics and culture. Michael Seifert, um, what do you want to leave us with? I'm grateful. I'm grateful for people that are fighting for the truth and fighting for life. It starts there. And so for me, um, I, I'm, I'm inspired because if you're, if you're passionate about the pro-life issue, Take the root of why you're passionate. It's because you believe inherently that there's dignity to life and that there's a, a, a right that each person is given because they exist, not right. just based on their location. And then if you take that root and you take it to these other issues as well, um, I, I mean, you, you move the needle in not just the pro-life issue, you move the needle in every facet of society if you fight with the same passion there. And I, I'm, I'm so excited because I, I want to band together with a group like that to say, let's take back the country Amen. and let's do it in your backyard. That's right. Mother Teresa said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Like it starts in my local community. That's right. Praise God. And so I'm excited. I'm actually, I'm leaving this hopeful because I, I think that we can create a really, really amazing movement in the United States that starts Amen. to reclaim a lot of what feels lost. Praise so, God. Yeah, because on. we're not exercising or demanding our rights. We're exercising our responsibility yeah, we and are. our stewardship over what we've been given, which is the freest country in American history. Thank you, Michael, for joining us Thanks, today. Thanks, Seth. Appreciate it, man. Look forward to having That's you awesome. on again soon. Thanks, guys, for joining the show today. If you want to learn more and engage with me online, head on over to SethGruber.com, S-E-T-H-G-R-U-B as in baby boy, e rcom to sign up for my newsletter, to see my speaking schedule, if you want to hear me speak live and local, or to book me for an event. My fall calendar is actually filling up very quickly. Very few October slots left, but some, some September slots left if you want to book me to speak at your church, youth group, conference or pregnancy resource center banquet and head on over to youtube uh, subscribe hit the notifications bell so you don't miss an episode we want to uh, grow the platform on the second largest search engine in the country and reach people with pro-life ideas good ideas while we still can thank you so much for joining the show we'll see you next week i'm seth gruber and this is unaborted